We all set? All set. Wonderful. Pandemic, war, stagflation, monkeypox. That's a lot of headwinds when you're called to manage NPLs. Um, they're mostly out of control. There's not much we can do. But I guess there's one thing we can do to expedite NPL resolution, which is to adopt technology. Thank you all for being with us. My name is Tassos Kuzanastasis. I'm the Managing Director of AG Capital Partners. I'm delighted to be here to moderate this panel on the adoption of technology in the Greek market. Uh, I'm thrilled to have a fantastic uh, roundup of uh, panelists. We've got Fulvio, John, Alan, Georgos, Dimitris, and Nikos. Gents, thank you for being with us. If I can ask you in two sentences your names and what you do, please. My, our names and? You know your name and what do you do? Okay. I am George Tomiolakis and I work as head of R&D in Archeotiki SA, a Greek uh, company for information. In essence, market. that means uh, data extraction and the, the document management? Among others. Wonderful. Yes. Hi, I'm Nikos Patsiogenes. I'm the co-founder of Prosper Prosperity. Uh, we're a prop tech company uh, working with uh, institutional investors and uh, REO servicers in uh, managing portfolios for assets. My name is Fulvio Pelargonio, one of the co-founder of MPL Markets. It's an electronic marketplace, European-wide, facilitating sales of MPL, and with a data company doing analytics and uh, reporting on uh, MPL, and recently also performing loans. Good afternoon, everybody. Alan Beechner, co-CEO and co-founder of Altada. We are an artificial intelligence company, HQ in Cork. Uh, recently opened an op office in Athens. We're in 11 locations globally and we work with uh, asset management companies and custodian banks in the US predominantly and we're now looking to the US. We've primarily focused on doc intelligence and the ability to ingest significant data sets for data extraction. Um, hi all, my name is Dimitris Penzas. I'm the CTO of Fabian Services. Uh, we're a technology company that's focused on uh, robotic process automation on how we can automate processes that uh, uh, normally people do in a manual way. Uh, I'm John McDonald. I'm the CEO of Recognite. We take data, make it meaningful and help you through the whole of the life cycle of real estate. Excellent. Thank you. There's two ways, there's two options to get us started. Um, the first option is to take the dim and miserable view that technology is not being adopted. Or we can go for something, you know, a bit more exciting, which is what are the latest developments in tech as relates to NPL? So, for example, latest developments in machine learning, in AI, in RBA. Who wants to get started? Maybe you, Alan. Sure. Um, so, I guess there's two kind of pillars that I see occurring, which is the evolution, firstly, of different kind of infrastructure developments, which is technology adoption is now at its height. And that's been driven by the new digitalization era, which is the resourcing and the talent that's coming into an organization. There's an expectation that the company they're working with has some kind of technology roadmap or strategy. And obviously, you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning, blockchain and quantum computing is, you know, some of the technologies that are being adopted. Um, what I see is the transition from automation to strategic and tactical deployment of technologies and it falls under the guise of digital transformation. Okay. I think you do RBA, RBA. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Although not a, um, not a new technology per se, it's, uh, RBA started appearing around the beginning of uh, 2000. Um, it has recently started uh, catching up, uh, especially in the, in the Greek market because we have been doing a lot of manual processing for a long time and now uh, people have been pressured into doing more and more and more and uh, really a technology that can emulate um, something that uh, the humans do which is um, follows rules and is of large volume now makes sense because suddenly we have all these portfolios that need to be managed, all this data that needs to go around and we don't have as many people as we really want. So technology here and special okay. IPA is something that can you know, really lift us off the ground and allow, allow our people because we, we, we employ our people to be strategic, to be innovative, to, 
to think and we just make them do a lot of reports and stuff that that do not utilize their brain. So yeah. technology, I think, especially ERP, is something that uh, yeah. really starting to... Analytics, to marketplaces, what's happening, guys? I don't know, I'd just pick up on that point. You know, RPA is really incredibly important because the whole of the process, that digital journey, if you can make one, is extremely transformative for productivity. And when you look at real estate, there are so many different actors involved. In a simple transaction, there's four, five, six different parties. And right now, they're really not collaborating very well. So as you extend your process outside the organization, in most industries, this is just every day. It's not happening. The lawyers aren't connected in. The valuers aren't connected in the way they could. And that would free up so much capacity to improve the way you do business. And that's even before you touch deep technology right. about data manipulation and improvement. And coming out to that, I think this is to get left behind to, to, to tell what, what we see. Uh, uh, as a marketplace, we are basically an interface between uh, investors and sellers and people which are managing the, uh, the portfolios. And actually, the adoption of intermediate technology is actually what is happening, right? It's no need to go to blockchain if you don't know, if you don't have then digitalize your data. If mm -hmm. your data is not uh, uh, in the right format, uh, and if the people are not linked in. Uh, before in the panel, we had Marco and Gabe from a European data warehouse that were actually supporting the, uh, no, encouraging people to give, uh, give uh, um, um, comments on a standard template from uh, uh, from regulators, it's EBA and then there is behind the EC. Uh, and that's actually the basis. You need to create a data tape and you don't even have a format. So this is actually what people are looking at and people are struggling too. Uh, and and uh, we do have uh, um, uh, different uh, databases, templates, but actually you need to feed them. And the way you feed them is actually is mostly manual, but not only that's where technology comes in, and actually technology can you know, increase transparency for investors and sellers. If, we, if I add to what you said, this is not accidental. All this MPL related data comes a long way back. It, maybe it started from bank A, which was uh, acquired by bank B, and then all of it was sold Legacy. to bank C, etc. Now the chain is very long and it will be even longer when uh, the portfolios will be sold again and again and again. The peculiar thing is that more or less, if you think about it, all of these parties have more or less similar needs because they need to see particular pieces of information, not exactly the same for everybody, but uh, the information, the metadata that needs to be extracted out of all this uh, mess <laughs> is uh, really uniform or should be uniform. Despite the fact, everybody tends to work on his own little environment, which causes huge needs for data migration, data transformation, then to pick up all these inefficiencies and everything else. And uh, this is, causes a lot of uh, delays in, a, in an industry where time is of true essence. You need to do things fast and do it uh, correctly. And all this infrastructure that is lagging uh, is, uh, is causing all these problems. So this is, there are fundamental things that need to be fixed before technology actually comes in to sort stuff. Okay. This is... Uh, <clears throat> I, don't, I don't think companies have the luxury of time though, in terms mm -hmm. of it's change or die, right? So if you become the dinosaur, your competitors you are... You met the engine right during flight. Yeah, I mean... That's it. I mean, like you have to kind of iterate and do not let, you know, perfect be the enemy of good, right? But the reality is there's one thing that's, you know, going to put a, a, a pressure on companies, which is there is a talent shortage coming, right? There is a gap in terms of how you can acquire talent, which is your resource. And frankly, these individuals will not work within a company that's not digital transformed. They'll just mm. find something else. So the technology is now becoming part of the mainstream. But the other defining moment is people that join companies now from a culture perspective, which is a very important point, they want to see culture. They want to be working within a business in the value chain. So the valuable elements of the business is not sitting, reading documents, inputting our key information. You know, if you look at, you know, take an asset management company where we are working with, which is a live use case. So there are quant guys who are now iterating into fund management or bond management. They spend 80% of their time preparing to make 20% decisions. 
Yeah, and if I may add also um, another aspect that we tend to underestimate, um, I mean, ob obviously and rightfully so, a uh, majority of companies, you know, they, they focus on improving uh, performance, improving pro productivity, profitability, uh, and this is something that will be, you know, a very hot topic in the next few years for all servicers. But uh, something that we are not necessarily looking at this stage now is how we engage with customers and what kind of experience we give. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, we have, or uh, servicers have and institutional investors have assets that they need to be commercialized. Um, I heard the, the term uh, liquidation process. I mean, mm. that sounds pretty dry to me. I mean, <laughs> uh, we definitely need to provide, you know, uh, you know, something which is more an enhanced, uh, an enhanced customer experience. It's a very competitive game out there. Uh, we need to, to make the assets stand out. We need to make the assets, um, you know, to provide all the necessary information and most importantly, provide a holistic ecosystem of services um, which are digitally enabled in order to provide all necessary bits and pieces required for the transaction, okay. either services or digital mortgages and so on and so forth. Thank you all for opposing my notion, my motion and taking the dim view that nothing is happening. <laughs> so, I, I, okay, I just want to ask you then, is there a market or a country where technology has been adopted, which is perhaps the beacon for the Greek market? Ireland, a few years ahead, or Spain? Yeah. Anyone's got experience? I mean, my, obviously, US is, you know, really, you know, excelling. China obviously can't be ignored. Uh, last week, I sat on a panel with the European Business Angel Network in Ireland, which is the largest angel network in, in Europe, I guess, 34 billion under management. And the conversation pivoted to the sovereign protection of Europe in terms of technology adoption to ensure that Europe stays ahead. Ireland would definitely be one of the top adopters. I'm actually a ministerial appointment. You're talking about the NPL industry in Ireland? Or yeah, okay. in general. Right. In general. So the, M the NPLs has been driven by, okay, how do you make better decisions? How, what's the quick, what's the, what's the speed of response to onboarding, mm -hmm. right? Which is, in essence, significant data sets that require some intervention. Yeah. I think it's very variable across different markets, because if you look at the US, some elements are so way ahead, but that comes from a degree of transparency that sits there. You can, you can acquire data and people are doing excellent things about commercial leases. You know, what are the local rental values? When's a void coming up? You can look up almost anything that's happening in the New York market. And that level of information is certainly letting people make more decisions. But when you start looking back at what happened in the resi crisis, that there's much less information there because of the way mortgages were bundled, securitized, and sold on. So, although some elements of that market are way advanced, I would generally rate it a long way ahead of Europe in almost every aspect, but it's not a complete and perfect system of allowing you essentially to have a utility for relevant data. Right, the, the, it's, it's interesting. I, I, um Coming to that, I mean, I don't think that there is a place to look at in terms of the uh, um, perfect case. The perfect case. It's it's more like uh, uh, it's more like uh, what's, what's it's more like it's, it's 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 just like uh, uh, MPL cycles uh, have actually gone all through the, the world. And when a cycle, when a crisis breaks out. Uh, you find a solution and Five you find a solution when you've got a crisis. You, you spend the money, you spend time, you find your way out. Then actually an extra crisis comes somewhere else. And this is what happened, for instance, a little bit also in, in, in Europe, right? where actually we had the Spanish crisis 2012 addressed. Then we got the Italian 2016 addressed, mm. GATS, for instance. And then we got the, a couple of years later Greek. And then we got Hercules, which is the, the little brother of GATS better than the previous one. So it's just like the same with technology, right? Uh, it, it goes around and you learn from the, the previous experience. And, uh, and for instance, and, and then you get, and you get, for instance, pieces from here and there. The Nordics are super good in terms of data. Right. One of the, the uh, people here coming from the Nordics. Uh -huh. So uh, you're kind of collecting in the, in the place where actually everybody's focusing in what you learn around. And sometimes you need to learn from the previous experience or sometimes, sometimes a little bit around. And it's, uh, so I would look probably at Nordics, UK is a good example, and actually Italy is the last, but now probably Greece is gonna be where people are gonna learn. Because now we're talking about secondary, this is gonna drive, uh, it's, it's a big market for the secondary. 
So mm. probably the next crisis somewhere else is going to be living for Greece. But will the next crisis somewhere else, maybe Turkey, will they capitalize on the experience of the rest of Europe? Yeah, the investors here are... Greece, Greece hasn't capitalized on the experience of other countries there. He, he has capitalized on something, and so and, and it was made some mistake, like everybody. Okay. For the Hercules, is a very good example. It improved, but still has a problem. In my view, the problems are the data, which are not available, and tell you and repeat. Uh, and uh, probably next time, people will, will, will do it uh, in a better way. Okay. So. Um, maybe I can add here, on, especially on the real estate side. I mean, we have seen that um, definitely investors and advisors capitalize, um, you know, the experience that they have gained in other markets, more mature markets like Spain or, or Portugal, uh, which are markets that they already operate under, you know, this framework for more than 10 or 14 years, maybe. Uh, however, we haven't seen necessarily, you know, um, tools or solutions that, uh, you know, they can be, you know, spinned uh, off, you know, to other uh, markets, um, you know, in a, in a, in a fashionable manner and, and be able, you know, to be, to be adapted. So there's definitely a gap there. Another point, uh, and, you know, uh, for myself, you know, coming from the startup world, you know, I can tell you that there are multiple companies that are popping out, uh, you know, trying to address specific elements of the market. And, uh, you know, we see that there is definitely higher appetite from, from servicing companies in order to test the waters with them and, you know, um, and, you know, uh, walk the, the, the innovation journey together. I, I can speak to that, you know, coming from a startup. So we founded 2017 Privacy by Design. We addressed compliance, pivoted into 2019 into non-performing loans and other use cases. We've grown from a team of nine to now 141 in 11 locations, 15 offices globally. And our clients are in that, that sweet spot of MPLs, early buyouts, mm. you know, distressed assets. Now we're being pulled into other use cases, which is identifying multi-family opportunities, single tenancy opportunities, credit scoring, credit data. So what happens is most, time, most of the time with us, it's an adoption conversation. So once a client adopts you, they then start looking at how can this technology be utilized in a horizontal manner across the data sets. And normally what happens is it's kind of the same data set, right? The data's coming in. They just not, they're not quite sure how to manipulate it or how to handle it. So that's where we suck in. And our single biggest competitor is DIY. They've tried to do it themselves. They haven't got the resourcing. And there is a virgence now of, there is a data science talent gap globally, right? Where companies cannot get access to data scientists. 77% of our company is AI guys. So that's the difference. So when we sit across the table from subject matter experts that have a pain point, we can address a very specific ask, which is, can you bring us into a digital transformation strategy? That's quite interesting. DIY, I want to come back to it later. Sure. Uh, I cannot help but ask a philosophical question, right? Uh, you're a startup, you're a startup, we invest in startups. I was reading a book some time ago called Crossing the Chasm by Jeffrey Moore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wore the t-shirt as us. Right. <laughs> not, 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 not that more. Another guy. <laughs> So the, the author describes the technology adoption life cycle, starting with innovators, you have early adopters, you have early majority, late majority, and the laggards. Uh, does your smile uh, imply that the NPL industry lies in the laggards? Well, is it the industry or is it the people that want to supply it <laughs> at that stage? And the reality is that probably 70 plus percent of all the prop techs or the real estate techs will never cross any chasm in their lives. Mm. Um, there's uh, some beautiful technical idea actually chasing a problem to solve, but doesn't have enough importance to people to want to solve it. So is the industry as a whole is it an early adopter? Has it got that degree of maturity? I would say in some technologies, it has jumped the chasm just. Is it on the upward trend? Maybe in 23, 24, we'll start to see it getting there. RPA, most certainly. I think in NLP, recognizing documents, extracting information, yes, that's happening. Mm. But once you get to the higher levels of adoption of things like image recognition, computer vision. You know, we use that to do quality scores and yep. assess what a building is and differentiate it to basic data. That kind of thing really is way before the chasm. There are a few people experimenting with it. And again, even all these internal developments, everyone thinks they can build something. To your point, do it yourself is the biggest competitor mm -hmm. along with Excel. Um, that 
people don't recognize what it actually takes to build and productize something, which is usually four to five hundred percent more than the estimate of we can build this for X. And those projects just decay because the knowledge isn't there, even if they were able to find the data scientists in the first place. So is the case of not invented here ITs, or is, do we have a general perception and adoption problem? It's not a, I don't think it's a not, in, not invented here case. No. It's a rather a problem of, uh, you know, managing expectations really around technology. When people think of AI and uh, they think that it's a wide uh, intelligence system that can do everything with a press of a button, um, this is never going. To, this is not going to happen, at least in the foreseeable future. We are far behind that thing. So, is it true? It's just a clever washing machine. No, it, <laughs> it's it's more than that. Okay. But it's not something that can do everything at once. It has to be a very precise business case. So the client needs to know exactly what they're looking for, so that the AI will be instructed properly in order to perform this task. It will perform it well. It will perform it reliably. When I say reliably, you will know what to expect. Surprise is no good for business. If you are a seven-year-old kid opening your birthday present, you like surprises. If you are a CEO of a company, you're not happy to do that. So are you saying so it's an issue of disillusionment? So I'm willing to listen to your solution, but unless it does everything with, uh, you know, whistles and blows, I'm not interested. Is that what people say? AI is use case specific. This is what, exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. We need to define the use case very clearly and then Narrow. train the AI, the AI to do the task. Then you will get good, reliable results very quickly. You will okay. see, you will feel the difference. And this is happening as we speak. It's no science fiction. I believe the colleagues know that already. Uh, but, uh, you know, we had clients that uh, were trying to use AI and they started uh, training the technology with documents, press clippings, uh, contracts, uh, photographs, whatever. It's never going to work. It can't uh, determine. It's not a human being. This is something that needs to be understood very well. But your point about chasms is quite interesting because if you start to read the, the shock press, you know, AI will take your job away. No. Okay, AI will take boring, mundane tasks away from some people. And those people should be eliminated or redeployed to do things of added value. I don't think we've even got close to the chasm mm -hmm. in terms of adoption, threatening, let alone a job. but. The real threat is those that don't do something yep. are going to be so behind after two, three years, and just their businesses are going to be laggards. They're going to fall behind their peer group. But I, I, think, sorry, go ahead. I, I tend to disagree. I forgot to say this is a great panel. You're entitled to fight, uh, argue, <laughs> disagree. Yeah. No, uh, yeah, I, I kind of, uh, uh, I get your point. I mean, logically, this, this is what would happen. But unfortunately, we're an MPL. If we're talking about MPL, it's a very slow motion field. Mm. Okay, so and people can sit on asset for years before mm -hmm. they realize what's going on. And usually it's not a good Should threat. it be a slow industry? I mean, surely they can do better and get rid of them. The they. problem is actually that if it's quicker, if it's quicker, it's cheaper. Mm. And then actually you, may, you make more money and you redeploy your capital. The pro, MPL is a recycling story. You're recycling capital. If you recycle capital, which is stuck there in something that, that doesn't go anywhere, okay, you recycle quickly, it costs less. Uh, and you make it available for the, for the community in a quicker, which but, is better. But for me, that's, that's the paradigm, right? Where yeah. Europe's secondary market is only starting. It's embryonic. It's yep. around a long time, but you know, there are other markets that are mature significantly, which is if you do have the data, you can make decisions more efficiently. But back to your paradox of the adoption of technology, you know, the global GDP of technology and AI by 2025 to 2030, the increase would be $15.7 trillion. And 70% of that is going to come from automation of labor. So it's already here, guys, in terms of, and back to your point, it's not if or when. It will take jobs, but it'll take the jobs that nobody wants to do, right? Mm. And it's going to streamline them, and that's it. And it's I an mean, evolution process. You don't stop it. It's evolving. I mean, like, AI is an overnight success. It's around the 1920s, right? Mm. Like, we don't embrace change quickly as humankind. It's here now. It's gone through four winters to get here. But COVID has exposed mm. companies in terms of, the amount of processes that they're doing on a daily basis that can be automated. Yeah, but I think it's, 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 it's coming along because the, the market and the NPL market inherently it's, it's slow, as Fulvio said, it is. Especially all the companies that came up came from the banks. 
They need to use tried and tested procedures and systems that are mature, have developed, and then in the mix, you bring in the investors who are inherently early adopters. So that's exactly. going to have an, a, a bleeding effect to what people were doing, and it will, I'm pretty sure that it will definitely speed up things. Totally. Yeah, and totally. for sure, I mean, uh, especially, you know, as, as the business plans evolve and we have secondary sales, uh, there's going to be an extra push for results. Uh, so definitely, you know, replicating the same models and the same practices will not deliver the results. Specialization is the answer. Yeah. So we believe that, you know, a specialization will only come by leveraging, you know, technology and tools, new methods and methodologies. So there's definitely a space, you know, to accelerate right. uh, the digital transformation of maybe smaller companies that they will have, you know, special angles to deliver special solutions and deliver the desired results. But back to your point, um, most of NPLs in Greece have transacted and now sit on the hands of investors. Mm -hmm. But we still haven't seen adoption, or have we? No, we haven't. So not even the investors can affect that. Mm, yeah, well, that's it's, why we're here. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it, it's it, happening. It's, it's happening. It, it's a, it's a slow process to get there, but uh, I, I, I'm very sure it will accelerate. Because, uh, I mean, oh, oh, in, all, in all the companies so far, people have been, I don't know, processes and systems have been inherited from... Still legacy people. systems. Absolutely. Right. Well, uh, I, got, I got an answer for that. I mean, my, my, my job for long years has been securitization. So I'm kind of been burned by, i not been burned, but I was working on subprime uh, times. So I've seen it now quite a bit. Um, and what the GAX and the HAPs have done is actually they've frozen a problem waiting for this to be solved, which means, okay, no, no harm now, but, it, it, but actually, do I really need to rush? Mm. Well, no, because, uh, and the fact that actually that there's high leverage, there's very little information, and actually this is and there is a layer between the investor and the asset and the money that actually um, allow, uh, uh, kind of restrict the possibilities to act uh, uh, and the incentive to act quickly. Uh, and I think that this guarantee technically goes into, uh, is activated when you stop paying interest, which is probably for, for both programs seven years from now, even if you collect very, very little. So you can pretend, extend, pretend that nothing is happening thanks to the securitization. This is the error that you were mentioning before. So it's the right instrument, but it's made in the wrong, wrong way. And this takes out the incentive to quickly come to a solution. That's right. why the, the innovation is, is lagging. Uh, so by, by use time, yes, but no, time is expensive. And to add to this, um, actually, when we're talking about the debt industry, what are we talking about? It's an exchange of hands of a particular risk. So the less the risk, the better the nice. rate that you're getting, the better the return. So the more clarity you provide to the next chain totally. uh, of the data by employing the, te the technology to really clarify what it, is, what it is exactly that is changing hands, the better rate that you're getting. I'm not sure that people realize that in the first place. I mean, the, the, totally. the most common issue with technology where AI has stumbled upon, as far as MPLs are concerned, which is paper-based mostly, is OCR. People don't invest in sending it out to a scanning factory to be properly OCR, and then you try to process the document, and it can't be read because the OCR is, uh, is poor, of poor quality, because they did it themselves instead of giving it to somebody specialized. Yeah, yeah. And then all this translates to reduced clarity of the asset be exchanging hands, and then Everybody who comes next goes with the worst case scenario, of course. Mm -hmm. Nobody is optimistic when they're buying something they don't know exactly True. the details. But, 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 but see, other, other, I mean, we have seen it in the past. Technology being there, not being adopted, and then, and then something happens and you adopt it very quickly. I mean, think about 10 years ago with the cloud. No, nobody would put data in the cloud. Nobody. Oh, it was, it's very risky. Nobody. Then, Pandemic comes along, <laughs> suddenly cloud, of course, and there's no way, of course. So technology is there to adopt it. it it's here. It's right. just scary that we're calling OCR technology. <laughs> <but> <laughs> <laughs> I won't get into that. It, um, no, I, I think it's, it's kind of ingrained in the human condition, right, in terms of change is scary, but it has to happen. Yep. You need some kind of forcing element to get you to the next stage of adoption. So what, what I certainly see is a significant approval of, okay, the technology is doing one thing, which is quicker decision-making, more efficient, more 
but once it hits into the value chain, which is what's occurring now, I'll give you a live example. We onboarded a 10 billion uh, portfolio in the US, and it was expedience of that portfolio that was, that was the necessary right. outcome, which was, okay, we know it's an MPL portfolio, but give us the service and notes, give us the propensity models, the prediction, price range, and how do we move this on, right? Mm. And that's the move into capital. And back to your point, there's an asset, right? Somebody's either buying or selling it. And if we don't lose sight of that, that's the move into currency, right? And the technology fits right in there in terms of the chasm. Yep. To that point about do the investors, you know, what do they think? Are they pushing it? I would say the answer to that is yes. I've certainly seen it in recent discussions. They've actually, the investors got involved and said, what is this solution that you know, mm -hmm. the servicer okay. in this case is thinking of doing? Because ultimately, they want to be able to monitor business outcomes. There's a business plan. How are you progressing towards that? You know, what's the, the, the turnover rate of the properties you said you would sell at this point in time? Are you hitting all these goals? And actually, is the technology you're going to adopt going to support simply that degree of reporting? And as you're often remote, you might be US-based, major investor, how are you going to make sure that actually you're following good governance, good processes, everything is doing what we expect as an investor? And we're seeing that they want transparency on that. And John, they're, they're, they're communicating now, what is your ESG program? Which is a, a caveat of technology adoption, right? Yeah. Yeah. Investors do want to push for technology, but don't they face pushback from the services, which are too, you know... Um, don't know, as I've just signed a know. major servicer to I don't think take so. the whole yeah. thing on. I okay. don't think so. Yeah. Uh, they might, but it's a cost. But that's your investors as well. Okay. You know, yeah. That's who you're performing your service and your business plan and your outcomes for. Yep. You aren't going to get more investors if you're not providing that in the medium term. It's the stick, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, so we've got two mooting points, which is the DIY or not. We've got the, uh, the issue with disillusionment and the definition of the solution. Do you think the regulatory framework or maybe labor unions have a role to play in the lack of adoption? In the, sorry? In the lack of adoption of technology. Oh, totally. Look, separately, I'm, I'm, I am the ministerial appointment to Ireland's Enterprise Data for Advisory Forum for our Department of Enterprise and Trade. I co wrote our national AI strategy. And part of that adoption is the digital transformation strategy that aligns with trustworthiness, AI, AI, ethical AI, and adoption. So there is a brief from European Union, which is, you know, how do we support the European states to get into the digital transformation strategy? So it's hot on the agenda. They formed expert groups, advisory forums. So it's here, it's, it's coming. I think the governance and the compliance part, you know, probably need to more, possibly need to more engage the innovators to understand what does compliance look like, what does that framework look like. Surely, but different countries in Europe diff, move in different speeds. So, for example, in yeah. France, right, you have an open source data for property. Yeah, I mean, say, I mean, there are multiple ways that governments can support, you know, the, this kind of initiatives, right? I mean, um, in, in Greece, we have experienced in the, very, in the last few years, you know, a tremendous um, progress. Uh, in the kind of, you know, we know with, with our interactions with government, uh, that they're definitely, you know, simplifying, um, uh, you know, process interactions. Uh, there's definitely a roadmap ahead, but uh, access to open data, um, especially, you know, transactions, um, and then this kind, you know, of um, uh, real estate related data will definitely provide the necessary um, uh, transparency and, you know, a, a fair starting point for the market in order you know, to, 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 to bring the necessary normalization to the markets, to the pricing, and to the transactions. Mm. But, but on the other hand, um, OK, regulation, uh, regulatory bodies might be slow, but um, I mean, most of the times, they have been used as scapegoats. Are we ready there? Yep. I mean, we, we, we just say, oh, yeah, because it's, the, it, it's not up to speed. Uh, we shouldn't do this and this. But we do not see internally. We look, but we don't see. Let's fix our problems first. Okay. And regulation will come along. Yeah. Well, based on your experience, what is the greatest inefficiency which, would, which makes you scream murder? You want to bring the dagger out and <laughs> If you were to change one thing in this industry, or maybe in Greece, what would it be in terms of technology? People reading documents. <laughs> so, okay. I mean, it's crazy. We, we, <laughs> we've engaged in companies like based in New York, downtown, 350 people to read consumer loans. 
and their strategy is to hire another 300 people. And they're using an OCR tool for people to input the information manually into the system. And it's bothering you because it's, the technology is so well proven or because it's the start of the chain which blocks everything else? It's just, it's just a complete clog, right? I mean, you're, not, you're going to have heavy churn, attrition, you know, you're going to have a, a, a depressed workforce, they're doing a mundane task. Never mind the inefficiencies and accuracies of somebody reading 6,000 pages in one document and then forgetting where they read, left off and come back again and just say, look, I'm just going to data sample. I mean, there's a regulatory issues. They're getting fines and they'll pay the fine because there's no other solution. Why, why is that? Is it because they've got a, an army of legacy people from the bank which they need to employ? No, it's, it's, just, it's just kind of down to mindset change, right? Mindset. Like, yeah, adopt the technology, try it, run it in tandem. You don't have to replace one or the other. It's execution, right? So they won't even do A-B experiments? Let's read a few documents. They'll try it themselves. Right. They'll get somebody in-house to build it. And then, you know, an OCR tool is not, an OCR tool is not machine learning. Mm -hmm. right? but it gets under the frame of AI. Okay, vote of hands. Who thinks that DIY is a real problem? Who thinks that technology is not adopted because people are trying to do it internally? <laughs> no, well, um, it, it it's depends on the task. <laughs> it, it's a factor. Um, I think that organizations should do some of their own technology and they should do some best of breed and they should be accountable and responsible in your own business for your own systems integration. That's the CIO of the future. Uh, I would have gone probably for documents and things like that, but I have to go for my bugbear of Excel, Excel, and Excel everywhere. That is the that, thing that the drives me mad. Operational risk, basic errors, duplication, mm. awful. Yeah, and the fact that's, that's, part, see, that's the kind of the fact that you see also the same data existing in many different systems. Silos. <clears throat> So, yeah, yeah, and uh, there is no connection between this, and you probably use two different systems to maintain uh, overlapping data, which of course never agrees with each other, the which is a right? disaster. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas there are content management systems nowadays that can, we have one actually, <laughs> that can, you can change, have the main corpse of data, and then change the lens through which you look at it, depending on your area of interest, let's say, or which part you are. and it's looking at the same body and uh, matches all needs. You yeah. don't need to maintain this many times and lose all this uh, time and effort to... Yeah, there's de def definitely, you know, the fragmented systems and platforms, you know, that uh, they cover bits and pieces of the process are, uh, for me, one of the most, you know, uh, you know uh, inherited risk that the company has. Uh, it's very hard to, you know, to, 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 to progress. It's very hard to, to monitor uh, the performance let alone, you know, reporting to institutional investors that they sit in London and they have, you know, portfolios parked in services all around Europe. Uh, so, yeah, definitely, I think uh, the, the way ahead is, uh, you know, integrated platforms that they cover, you know, majority of processes and they bring, you know, all, all stakeholders, you know, uh, uh, to collaborate on it. Uh, with that respect, I would have said probably not come to collaborate now. <clears throat> it's availability of, uh, of data. But the way that... Uh, the authorities, the regulators, try to make people collaborate <coughs> in imposed standard, which is a very, it's a very long exercise. Uh, nobody wants to do that. And by the time you've done it, the market has gone uh, no further down. So you've got an obsolete mm -hmm. uh, uh, form of collaboration. Yeah, uh, in forever in a catch up mode. Yeah, exactly. The, the, in my experience, what has uh, worked very well in order to disseminate uh, uh, um, data uh, to make people collaborate has been economic interest. And this is, uh, this is mainly done by transactions. If you have transactions in the market, if you get secondary, if you have got securitizations, if you have uh, uh, sales, if you have money deployed there, then actually people move. And people uh, try to share, and even the regulators goes quickly behind it. You now takes, for instance, the case of, uh, of the Bitcoin and all the, and all the blockchain technology behind the crypto. Now, the, the regulators have been lagging behind, of course, but they, now it, it's very worried what's happening because people have lost money, a lot. And now, they, now they're rushing to, to regulate it. So same story with MPL, same story with economic interest. So my, my view is actually, if money is coming into a country, into a sector, people move, move. And, and I am positive about Greece and about you know, all, all the other countries where actually investors have invested. Um, and that's the only way that, you know, unfortunately, greed uh, and, and, and economic incentive, though, we are, after all, uh, we are yep. to that.
I mean, I, I was going to raise the issue of data and how do you open up the sources, but uh, it's a bit... You can do it, you can do it. Um, slightly different example, maybe slightly different drivers, but some data has utility value. Um, you always add your own view on it. You create proprietary advantage from it. And a few years ago, we created the Pan-European Data Credit Data Consortium, yeah, yeah, yeah. where we got, I think it was about 18, 20 banks contributing <clears throat> loan data or lost data, right. actually, in that case. It was statistically put together, and they all could access it. And they contributed it. We ran it. There was a fee for it. But everyone benefited from a very simple contribution of non-proprietary, non, it's confidential, but we held it that way. And Aggregated. that would make such a difference. It would give you standardization of basic data levels, because as you said, if you have transactions, you can start doing that in the marketplace. There isn't really a marketplace, but you can get ways of doing that. Mm -hmm. And that would make an enormous difference. How can you push for that? I think you have to get one and perhaps two of the major market participants right. to understand the advantage to them. And the reality is you take out enormous costs. In that case, it gave them regular, I was gonna say arbitrage, I have to be careful. It gave them an advantage when you looked at cost of capital mm -hmm. because internal modeling allowed you to reduce your capital costs. Yep. But there was advantage in them of doing it and they could quantify a business case. And the fee to actually pull yeah, the data yeah. and get it back was negligible compared to the game. Uh, the two market, market leaders can make that happen and everyone else will follow. Uh, but you're talking about global credit data. Yeah. 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 Uh, that, that's such a, it's a very good example. And uh, they're trying to work out something on MPL, but actually, unfortunately, being uh, the, the market leader <coughs> institution where actually MPL is not a problem. Mm. No? <coughs> actually, here comes the greed, right? Yeah. The, the incentive. They don't have a, a big incentive to invest in that. We're collaborating, for instance, with them, uh, part of, uh, of, of their advisor panel. And, uh, and uh, we rely for some part of our platform on that. So it's, but it's, now it's simply like, it looks like uh, that the M for what concerns MPL, uh, that's actually somebody else's problem. But I concur with you. I mean, some, some big guys would actually at a certain point in time yeah, would put no, their, 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 their money where the mouth is. That these, the there is I, dead I'd dead. even be willing to open source models to help people do that kind of stuff because it would just be to everybody's advantage. Yeah, look, we, um, we worked with Experian in the US on credit scoring, credit data. Hmm? And you're, you're creating that aggregated platform, but the issue is data integrity, right? in terms of you know, who's actually going to monitor the data integrity. Well, if you've got uh, people <coughs> reading documents, you have a serious problem. Correct. So is it just a matter of convincing two or three CTOs in services? That's the only way it could start. You start, <coughs> right. Whether it succeeds, that is another matter, but it's the only way you can start it. It's the first gate to go through. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but in, in markets where there is, you know, lack of, of transparency or lack of, you know, formal data, official data, like, like in Greece, especially in the real estate sector, you know, having access to data is definitely, you know, gives you an edge. Totally. So I'm, I'm not very sure, you know, what kind of incentives uh, you can find in order, you know, to bring everyone together to collaborate, right? So maybe there, uh, I think the start should happen, you know, from the government, you know, that, you know, start unlocking, you know, open data. So at least, as I said before, you know, we have a first start and then, uh, every party, you know, can, can uh, in, interpret or translate those data, you know, or, you know and, and embed those data, you know, in their strategies. True. For instance, uh, it, and I think that, that it, uh, this happened when actually the, um, the repos, you know, the central bank repos was set up. Uh, now <clears throat> they appoint the European data warehouse as a repository for all the data, right? And you wouldn't be able to repo at zero or whatever if you wouldn't. Now, if you didn't, didn't uh, provide the data. Yeah. So now EDW has got a wealth of, uh, of data for that because people had economic incentive to put yeah, money there. Yeah. So why not link uh, the, you know, the, uh, the possibility to get government you know, money, loans, uh, subsidies, guarantees even, provided that you disseminate that or put the data where actually everybody else's data is. But there is they, industries doing that for many years, right? I mean, cyber. I've been sharing uh, pseudo anonymized data for many, many years, healthcare, insurance. education, insurance. So like financial services is adopting, but there is industries doing that. There's a platform in Europe called AI for, e for EU, which is a, a, an open data, aggregated data set, which is pseudo anonymized. 
which gives you enablement for training data sets. And back to your point, John, you know, that is something that could be a forum for open source models. Yeah. To, but it's, it's kind of get out of the wrong way, right? The, job, the adoption is one conversation, but the data sharing is a separate conversation in terms of yeah. that's companies with the willingness to recognize that, yes, there's a competitive edge element, but if it's a pseudo data set, it benefits everybody. A rising tide raises all boats, right? But it is happening in loads of other industries. Yeah. What, what caused those industries to be a earlier adopters than property? The need, mm. the need, customer interaction, client, de client management, client demand. and not having all the answers. It's commercial engine drives it, right? Okay. Yeah. All right, we are coming to the end of the session. Uh, I want to ask if each of you to uh, give us a glimpse into the future. If everything runs, what sort of technology do you think will be running NPLs going forward? Is it going to be NLP? Is it going to be bots resolving the loans? Is it going to be automated transactions through? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a smorgasbord. It's going to be choose the bit that's right for you on the right. day. Yeah. If I was to look at medium term, what would be the dramatic change? And that would be micro securitization if you had a blockchain. Yep, I, I agree. I'd that. love to see it. Okay. I don't think it's going to happen in my professional lifetime, but I don't know. maybe, I'll, maybe. I'll challenge you that. So, so we're deploying the platform 2023 using quantum NLP. Uh, running on federated learning to put uh, assets on chain. And that's been supported by AWS and we've got a major bank that's going to support that. Quantum NLP doing what? QNLP is just fast tracking the natural NLP. language processing. Okay, yeah. using it for? Onboarding portfolios, ingestion, attribute extraction, encryption, scale of technology, aggregated data, uh, aggregated data sets for consumption by our clients. Okay, but is it a matter of faster computing or the availability of data? It's faster is one thing, but safer, more accurate, and it's incredible. More accurate. Yeah. Okay, I, so I, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, I wouldn't go to the blockchain, but I concur with you. I mean, <laughs> just, you got a legacy world, which it's is- more DLT uh, than blockchain, but I get it. And, and then you have to transform it into something which is workable. That's any kind of technology, hopefully blockchain, because it's the link to any, any kind of regular, but actually my cloud, would be, I would be happy with the cloud. I mean, blockchain is already here. You can you can have a virtual data yeah. room on it's, uh, it's three steps away from where we are. No? Yeah, yeah. So totally. <laughs> but totally. but definitely blockchain can give you know very very good use cases, especially in the real estate side. Totally. Right? In in the speed that and uh, and security that transactions can happen. Uh, I mean, whoever moves uh, there first, and I mean on a centralized level, because you know decentralization is nice, but unless you know there's a centralized you know initiative, you know it will be very hard to to, to become mainstream. Uh, but definitely blockchain, you know, will, will, uh, will unlock the potential okay. of portfolios. Especially for MPLs, I think this applies very much because of the uh, successive links to this uh, chain. So blockchain is really fit for purpose. It's for syndicated this. also, right? Absolutely. So I think yeah. the challenge to us all would be find the catalyst to make that happen. Correct. A crisis. A champion. A war crisis. I think it's coming. <laughs> we already have it all. For, but I, I yeah, totally. for, for me, and as a technologist, I would agree with, with uh, what has been said. The, um, the spark is the people. Sorry? Mm -hmm. So the people, uh -huh. people totally. is the spark. Totally. Because uh, technologies are great and we can discuss many hours about what great technological advancements, uh -huh. but what we lack is technology, education for middle and upper level management. If they don't understand the technology and they don't know their arsenal, they will never be able to use it. Totally. How many technologies we find and we, we create? It's, it's, it's technology, yes, but coupled with People. And some 26 year old will come and take their job, right? <laughs> but, but we also need to make it easy for them. Eh? I mean, if you ask for a pharaonic project for somebody to implement a new tech, high tech system or whatever, this is never going to happen. I mean, if you start by planting microservices to existing infrastructures that do clever stuff like robotics, like AI microservices, etc., it will start the engine, it will kick it, uh, get it started. And then things will uh, roll, so I started. believe. Nobody will totally. go all in day yep. one, I think. Any final comments be before we open the floor to questions? Get positive? Yeah. It's evolution, not revolution. <laughs> evolution. Okay. It's evolving. Change right? or die. Correct. Mm. Don't be the dinosaur. Yep. Any questions? I thought we'd get a laugh from the audience, but they're not. We should get them all to stand up and do a jig or something. <laughs> get the energy going. <laughs> We're trying to make MPL sound very exciting and 
Oh, hang on, we are blocking it from cocktails. So, oh, <laughs> yeah. we got we got the we got the. And it's lot. We got after lunch. We got the graveyard shift. Yeah. <laughs> Close our hand up. Yes. Is that for me? Is it a competition to you? Is it complimentary to you? Is that for me or some or anybody? Could you just repeat the question? Yeah. Metaverse. Me metaverse is it part of your business? Totally. NLP is Could it metaverse, be part right? of your business or is it competition to your business or no, natural, natural language processing is part of the metaverse in, in its height, right? So it's, it's here every day. Every, every, con, every application you consume, every app that you deploy is metaverse, right? The kids are living there, so totally. It's going to impact every business. Real estate-wise, I mean, you can now get into real estate investments through the metaverse. To totally, yeah. You can buy a house next to Soup Doggy, Snoop uh, Doggy Dog. Yeah. Is it something that concerns <laughs> you? Is it something that you look into? It doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's you cannot, it's a different game. You cannot ignore it. Hmm. Can't ignore it. It's the internet of today, right? So yeah. It's here. Or more of fantasy land, at least. It's here. <laughs> well, uh, up, up to the point If you want to escape from everyday problems, you know, you can, I, you, you can jump in Metaverse. I have four kids, they're 80% in the Metaverse and 20% here, so <laughs> it's happening, right? I mean, there's, there's an element of, of hype and there's an element of truth. Well, look, there's hype around everything because we like getting excited about new things, but yeah. it's here for a long time. I mean, like Metaverse is you know, gaming is starting to meet the real world, but when you see it converging together, again, I have to go back to the point that there's a generation coming behind us that don't understand anything else. They're, di they're the digital era. They are the generation that's going to drive change, mm. and that's all they understand. Data consumption, want it now, and they are going to be the new lifeblood of, of business, which is they're going to control the capital, right? And if you don't have your business geared up for your new client, the people are going to buy the assets, they're going to acquire assets, they're going to be dealing with your company, if you haven't got something to match their expectations, you're dead. So, so, so that whole, that whole no Gen Z a, thing. Sorry. <coughs> sorry so, one, so you're talking about uh, having a, a meta real estate, yep. you've got a meta real estate loan, and then you've got a, a meta MPL on the metaverse. Totally. Yeah, so as if we didn't have enough yeah. MPLs on yeah, our Actually, we can, we can multiply to make totally. a lot of business, right? We could I be in the metaverse right now, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> however, however it's delivered, that Gen Z, the, the it, it is simply a user experience. Totally. And I think this big discussion we always have between technology and data will and should disappear from the end user's perspective. It is just the experience they want of, it just happens, agree. it's there, it's totally on my that. device. Totally agree. Yeah. It, and AI becomes automation, right? Yeah. So it ceases to be AI once it's adopted. It's the paradox, right? Totally agree, John. And the borders are going thinner, right? So you gotta get it moving, guys. The borders between virtual and real world are growing thinner. Yeah, they're converging, by. right? You can still make money out of real estate in Earth 2 or whatever, <laughs> and to use it in the real world. It's, uh, there's, there's an element of truth. Think about the, the future of work, right? I mean, it's not far-fetched to imagine that we'll be having, we won't be having Zoom calls, we'll be having conference calls through our avatars in Metaverse. Totally. So that's, that's a real application. Yep. So I think it's already happening, right? Totally. Yeah. We, 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 back start of actually, <laughs> we, fund, we fund an AI accelerator in Trinity College Dublin, um, so we had 10 companies, one of the companies' avatars built an entire metaverse. Um, you live in the metaverse, you travel there, you can go see places, you have meetings there. It's incredible to see it, and it's where the movie industry is pivoting. And just think of, you know, think back to our time, right? I'm not speaking as the, as the universal we here, you know, playing Monopoly. Mm. It's Monopoly in the metaverse. Yep. We're going to be purchasing properties in digital, digital form. We've all done it. You know, how many of us got, you know, lost our shirts in Monopoly? Best education we've ever had, right? <laughs> Still oh, but, then, but then we get on to owning things and we could have a great discussion about I'm NFT. Scared of that <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have sold bank. No. <laughs> Still NPLs in Monopoly as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 1,000%. Yeah. Another question? Fantastic. I think we'll, um, we'll uh, wrap it up here. Uh, Ladies and gents, it's your opportunity for selfies with the tech stars of the conference, if you want to. Otherwise, thank you all very much. It was a pleasure having thank you here. You.